good afternoon shrey welcome to solo am i audible yeah. okay so shrey this is akarsha pasana and i will be your educator today as i can see that you have sent me a question here mm-hmm. that uh, so do you have a particular que- problem in this question or do you want me to explain this entire question to you uh, i want you to explain the entire question sure i can do that for you so let's get started it says that the diagram shows a partial food web containing the glypentelis wasp and the life cycle of the wasp okay so there's a partial food web that is given here and there's the life cycle of the glypentelis wasp that is given here so we have to use that based on the two diagrams which list correctly identifies the relationship between the glypentelis wasp and the other organism so we using these two charts we have to determine what kind of relationship is depicted here okay mm-hmm. so uh, let's look at the first food uh, web okay over here we have a caterpillar and this caterpillar is eaten by uh, this caterpillar is eaten by the stink bug stink bug yeah so i can say the caterpillar is eaten by two objects here that is the stink bug and the larva and the larva okay after that the food for this caterpillar is what uh, gava fruit and leaves yes eucalyptus leaves and guava correct okay so i have this information from the first chart now if i look at the second chart uh, chart that is the life cycle of the glypentelis wasp then we will see that there is the caterpillar that protects the pupae that converts into adult the adult lays eggs then the eggs uh, give out the larva that inside that develop inside the caterpillar then larva leaves caterpillar so basically where can i see a common link where is a common link yes mm, okay let let's not look at that okay so when we're talking about the glyopetalis uh, wasp here then you tell me uh, is there a common food between these two a common food that the wasp and the caterpillar share anything Cat- any common uh, foods yeah caterpillar because the adult see here adult lay eggs, eggs inside the zoometrid wasp caterpillar so this wasp needs this caterpillar to lay its egg so can i say this wasp is directly dependent on this caterpillar to lay its egg mm-hmm. yeah. okay now you tell me is the caterpillar directly dependent upon the larva of this particular wasp to ensure that it gets the food yeah so can i say that there is a relationship between the wasp and the caterpillar yeah where both are benefited in some manner yeah yeah so how is the wasp benefited so yeah yes how is the wasp which benefited? one how is the wasp benefit to see the wasp would need a place to lay its egg now the wasp needs a place to lay its egg and that place is provided by caterpillar place is provided by the caterpillar okay so and since the caterpillar is benefited by how how but yeah the caterpillar would eat the larvae of the wasp so in that manner it is benefited Yes. Where does it say that caterpillar so, eats the larvae? No, no. It it says it says. Uh, see, look at the partial food web. There is the caterpillar, and it uh, there is an arrow that shows that it eats the larvae. The glypentelis wasp larvae. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it is food. The wa the wasp become the larvae of the wasp become food for the caterpillar, while caterpillar becomes a place where the he can lay some eggs okay no it's the opposite so larvae is eating carp- caterpillar yeah let me let me check that out 
Yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yes. The larvae is eating the caterpillar. Sorry. Yeah. So how is the caterpillar benefited? That no, no. The caterpillar is. Uh, see, I just read the chart uh, oppositely. So basically, yes, the caterpillar, if they are eaten by the larvae, then it wouldn't be uh, a benefit for the caterpillar in any manner. Okay, the caterpillar would provide space for living and would also be eaten by the larvae. So the caterpillar is at harm here. Okay, so I will not call it mutualism now. Okay. I will not call it mutualism now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, for the stink bug, uh, stink bug and larvae, they are they are into competition now because they are competing for the same food that is caterpillar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, yeah. So I can say the first point for F is correct. Then there is parasitism. Of course, parasitism is also there because it is living on the um, I would say it is living on the body of the other one. So I will say that parasitism is also correct. So F point appears correct now. Okay, mm -hmm. F one is looking uh, correct because see, competition happens because both are competing for the same food. The larva and the stink bug they are having the same food that is the caterpillar. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And parasitism because this particular larva it first of all it gets uh, a shelter in form of that moth, oh, so that is parasitism, and it also eats it. Yes. Uh, how is like geometric moth like uh, uh, parasitism sorry so FOC says that moth is parasitism right yeah I think uh, is, uh, these are the three options that are available now yeah or there are more options F here F is the answer but I want to know how is it parasitic See, it is parasitism in that manner. See, this demetrid moth caterpillar uh, becomes the food for what? It is parasitism in that manner that uh, this geometrid moth would eat on this larva. Na? So, this geometrid moth uh, will become, sorry, ek second. This larva would, would eat the caterpillar. So, of course, this larva would be a parasite to the caterpillar. Na? This larva... Mm. This larva would eat, eat the caterpillar, okay? Larva eats caterpillar, okay? Larva eats what? Caterpillar. The caterpillar. Yeah, so it get it got food from the caterpillar. Mm -hmm. After that, does the larva live inside the caterpillar? Yes. Yeah. So larva also got shelter from the caterpillar? Mm -hmm. So did... This larva got food as well as shelter from the caterpillar. So, this larva becomes a parasite to the caterpillar, no? But, what, so, parasitism means that one is benefited and other one is not. So, how is caterpillar yeah. not benefited? Like, how is it negatively benefited? It is, see, it is negatively benefited in two manners. Number one, it is giving shelter but it is not getting anything in return. Number two, its larva, uh, its its caterpillar, they are being eaten over here. Can we see that the their its caterpillar they are being eaten by this particular thing out? So in both the in both the manners, it, he this particular caterpillar is at risk now. It is being eaten. Its population is depreciating as well as it is giving uh, a shelter in uh, out of in because it is it is not getting anything in return now. It is just giving shelter. It is just giving uh, what to say. Food, but it is not getting anything in return. So, in that manner, it is negatively benefited. Yes? Oh, yeah, I see. Thank you. Did you understand that, Shrey? Yeah. I'm really sorry. I just, uh, well, you know, I took the arrows in the other manner and that's why I confused you a little bit. I'm really yeah, sorry no for problem. that. Okay? No and problem. I hope it's clear now. Yeah, I had one more question. Sure, sure. Please send that to me. Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I'm yet to receive it. Okay, yes, got it. Okay. Uh, let's read the question. It says that the ocean sunfish, that is Mola Mola, is a large flat fish that spends most of its time in deep water, feeding mainly on jellyfish. Okay. The sunfish often have many species of copepods, that are small crustaceans, that bury their head 
into the soft tissue of the sunfish. Okay. The sunfish will sw swim in the surface of the water and lie sideways, allowing seabirds to eat the copepods from their skin. What type of relationship sunfish has with the other organisms? So let's get started with it. See what is happening here. There is a fish, okay? There is this fish. Mm -hmm. And on the body of the fish, there are certain small organisms. Okay, there are certain small organisms. These are crustaceans and that are embedded on the skin of this particular fish. Okay? And these are the copepods, correct? Yeah. Copepods. This is our sunfish. Okay. Now, when the sunfish would swim, there would be smaller fishes or there would be birds that would come and eat the copepods from the skin. So, let's consider this to be the bird and they will eat the copepods. Now, I have to devise a relationship. Now, you tell me. This copepod got what from the sunfish? Mm, it got shelter. It got cell shelter. Very good. So, copepods and the uh, and the bird they are having uh, some relationship correct they are mm -hmm. having some relationship but in this relationship is the sunfish you know affected in any manner any manner mm. uh, i think no no the copy po uh, po uh, the sunfish would neither have a positive effect nor have a, ne a negative effect so the relationship here is positive zero can i say that this will have a positive impact while the sunfish would have a negative impact. And what kind of a relationship is this? Mm, parasitism. No, no, no. Parasitism is always positive, negative. No? One is affected positively, the other one is affected negatively. Then we call it parasitism or predation. Correct? Mm. When there is a positive zero conflict, then we go for commensalism. What do we go for? Com commensalism. Yes, commensalism is a type of relationship where one organism is benefited, is benefited while the other one has no effect on the body. But, okay, but this the copy part for this one is F. Is F, okay, let me see what they are speaking of. Seabirds is mutualism, jellyfish is predation and copy parts is parasitism. With what? Okay, uh, the relationship of sunfish with the marine organisms. Sunfish and copepods is parasitism. Sunfish, wait, let me read it once again. Uh, that spends uh, sunfish on its copepods that bury their heads into the soft tissue of the sunfish. Sunfish would swim to the surface and line. See, one thing, uh, according to me, this should be commensalism because nowhere in the statement it is said that the sunfish is benefited negatively, correct? Mm. Can you Do you agree to me in that matter? Yeah. It is just said that uh, it is providing what? It is providing shelter, correct? Mm. So, I can guarantee you that there is no harm that is happening to sunfish here, okay? Yeah. So, answer should be commensalism, but let's look at the other options and then we can do the option elimination. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you tell me, this sunfish is providing what to the, um, to the seabird? Let's consider the seabird. Okay? To the seabird, what does it provide? The, the sun, uh, this sunfish, what does it provide to the seabird? Mm. Seabird get their food from the copepods. So yes, it is a positive relationship that way, that way now. Yeah. So you tell me that. Now this is uh, okay. And is there any benefit for the sunfish? Mm, no. No benefits for the sunfish. Mm. Uh, I think sunfish no. can, swims due to the copepods. No, nothing like that. So the sunfish and birds also have a relationship where...